I'm going to be speaking today about dry eyes. And in fact, many times it can be related to hormonal conditions, not only diabetes and thyroid disease, but in actual fact, sex hormone imbalances. And that includes estrogen and testosterone, which we typically associate with the perimenopausal and postmenopausal timeframe. Now, interestingly, about 60% of perimenopausal and postmenopausal women will experience dry eyes, but only 16% of them are actually aware that it's hormonally related. Estrogen and testosterone actually have receptors in the cornea and the meibobian glands, so it makes sense that if there's a sex hormone imbalance that it would impact on eye function. It would follow then that if a sex hormone imbalance can create or aggravate dry eyes, that rebalancing these hormones would help to alleviate or uh, resolve these dry eyes. Now in my practice, I am treating perimenopausal and postmenopausal symptoms, and those symptoms can be quite varied and includes dry eyes. And what I have uh, noted is that with nutritional uh, changes and dietary modifications and supplements, and the use of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is that dry eyes actually resolve along with all of these other symptoms. The scientific literature, however, suggests that uh, hormone replacement therapy in actual fact can aggravate dry eyes. What I say to that though is it is important to distinguish between whether bioidentical hormone or conventional hormone replacement therapy was being used. The difference being is bioidentical hormones match what our bodies actually make and conventional hormone replacement therapy are synthetic and do not match what our body makes. This is one of the more common mistakes within the hormonal scientific literature. It is an area that requires future study. We've been learning about the importance of antioxidants with regards to eye health, but in actual fact, antioxidants are critical for general health as well. Historically, blood work was the only way to measure antioxidant status. Fortunately, there is now a non-invasive way of getting the same accurate information as we can get in blood work, and that's called the biophotonic scanner. It's a Nobel Prize winning technology that uh, basically emits a light that bounces off the carotenoids, which are the mother antioxidants in our skin, and it's reflected back at a different wavelength uh, to the biophotonic scanner. And you can get a measure of what your antioxidant status is. It's as simple as placing your hand over the sensor and getting your results within 30 seconds. It's quick, it's painless, and it's valuable information that you wouldn't otherwise have. Scores in the red zone are lousy, and generally these people are smokers and or are obese. The orange and yellow zones are typical for much of the North American population and suggest that there is a definite room for improvement. Green is pretty good and the blue or the gray zone is exactly where you want to be. I scan each and every one of my patients at the Institute for Hormonal Health, not only for baseline uh, data, but also for objective measurement of improved antioxidant status over time. It gives us an idea whether the changes in unhealthy habits and uh, dietary changes and supplementations to improve antioxidant score are actually having an impact, because otherwise we would have no idea what our antioxidant status is.